Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to No Holds Barred, the channel where sometimes talk about fun stuff, sometimes talk about relevant stuff, sometimes talk about makeup, sometimes electronics, and sometimes it's a little bit of an adult subject. So, even though the words are going to be PG-13, the subject might get a little bit adult because the title, Real Men Like Thick Chicks, it's a little bit of a clickbaity thing because I am going to stay gender neutral throughout the whole thing because it's Pride Month. I happen to be queer as fuck. And I'm also not happy about the American ending of queer as folk. Brian Kitty, you're a jerk. Whoa, my age is definitely showing here. But yes, June is Pride Month and this doesn't really have anything really to do with any kind of sexualities, but I am going to talk about this in a gender neutral way. Because guess what? Body insecurities are not just a girl thing, they're not just a boy thing, they're an everybody thing. And I'm here to tell you that it's bananas. It's just straight off bananas and I just... I am just breaking on the inside from some of the posts that I see from, from friends and stuff like that where they feel like they're unworthy of love and they are they're un they feel like they're unworthy of sometimes life because they are a bigger, heavier person. And I'm speaking out on this from the things that I've learned, the things that I've, you know, had to deal with because I'm this size now, all right? But I have lost a lot of weight in the past about a year and a half. My body hasn't quite caught up to my weight loss. So even though I went from wearing a size 24 pants to now wearing a size 12, 14 pants, the body part kind of hasn't quite caught up. And I don't have that, uh, that, that figure whatever thing. Mostly, I don't care. Some people do, and sometimes I like, get the comment of, of stuff, and you know what? It happens. Um, and it does hurt sometimes, but for the most part, I have gotten used to it because I had, thankfully, a very strong upbringing on, on that part where, you know, people don't like you for who they are. Right? It's their problem, and that's true. But with social media, because social media wasn't a thing when I was a teenager, right? And it is now, and I understand the pressures and the whatnot, and um, I'm here to, to tell y'all the truth. It's not like the tea, it's the truth. Um, and, and yes, again, the title of like real men like thick chicks, it's kind of a clickbaity thing only because I'm going to say a real man, a real woman, a real human being, just a real person in general. Someone who has reached maturity. Now maturity can happen at a young age, it can happen at any time, and sometimes it will never happen at all. Alright? There's just some people that just don't. Whatever issues, there's so many issues that come into that. We're not going to talk about that. But we're going to talk about the fact that if you're a, a bigger person, you are more than worthy of love. You are more beautiful and you are more wanted than you think. That dumbass thing called the internet has ruined it for so many people. So, yes, before the internet happened, I mean, there was like, you know, magazines and movies and, and it was like the Playboy Bunny, you know. People always thought that they needed to look like a certain aesthetic to be considered beautiful and pretty. But social media ha has made it worse and so has like, you know, those, those sites like, you know, Pornhub. Which I got no problem with, because, you know, hey, whatever. Again, this is an adult topic. And, again, I stay gender neutral. I identify as queer. Technically, I'm pansexual. I don't like labels. I just love who you love for who the heck they are as a person. Not the look on the outside. And if you really think about it, most other people do. So if you think that you're unworthy of love because you are not the size that the models are when you watch those videos, you're mistaken. I'm going to talk about this today and try to 
give you the things that I've noticed so that you can reflect upon it and go, yeah. Because changing your way of how you see yourself is a very hard thing to do. I mean, it's not easy. Mostly, again, when you're bombarded by all these pictures and all these whatnots and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But this is where I'm, I'm going to start with again. I'm still not little, but I'm half the size I used to be. Still, at that, I learned something along the way. Now, what is that thing I'm talking about? You're probably wondering, like, hurry the F up, like, spill the beans. Okay, I will. Um, I, this is, this is no hold barred, okay? I don't have that kind of money. I don't have a lot of money. I have some. I'm happy with what I got. No complaints there. But I shop on the sales rack. And you know what? There ain't nothing wrong with that. Because my favorite sweatshirt that I love to death was $3 on clearance at Walmart. And every time I wear it, it is a disco. It is a party in the car because it's got a lot of sequins and the sunlight reflects on it. And we have a good time. And it was 3 bucks at Walmart and I'm damn proud that I wear that shirt. But when you look at the discount rack, just, just think about it. I'm sure everybody stops by the discount rack. Of course you do. There's not going to be Walmart. Discount rack anywhere. What are the sizes usually you find on discount racks? Do you find a lot of extra large shirts and large shirts and, you know, size 14, 16, 18 pants on clearance? No. You don't. You know why you don't? Because those are the ones that sell. They just put things on clearance because nobody has bought them and they need to get rid of it and try to make at least some money off of it. But the only reason that they can't sell the size extra small and small is because nobody fits in them. Think about it for a minute. You go to your favorite store and you're looking at the sizes and there's never any extra large, large, or, or if you go in the plus size section, you know, the 2X, 3X are the first ones to sell out. It's not that the companies don't have any of those sizes. They do. They're just the first ones to sell out. Why? Because 85 to 90 percent of people are not a size two. Which is what I'm trying to say. If you think that you aren't pretty, or whatever you think of good looking is, because again, I don't care what gender you are, aren't, or that you identify with, it doesn't matter because everybody has body issues no, no matter where you are. It's not a girl thing, it's, it's not a boy thing, it's just a everybody in the world thing. Um, try to let you know. The reason that you can't find your size most of the time is because it's already been bought. Because everybody is about that size. Seriously. Like, look around. Like, next time you go to the store, look around. Most people that are walking around are not the, the little thin sticks that you see in, in the movies and in, in the, those adult videos. And then again, the people in the adult videos, those aren't the usual, real body dimensions. Anyway, yes, most people out there are not the body shape type that you see in the movies and that you see on Instagram and all that whatnot. Because guess what? Movies and Instagram, super heavily photoshopped and all that kind of whatnot. And if there's a close-up scene uh, of an actor or actress, someone in a movie, and they seem to have like the perfect bum or the perfect legs, it's probably a body double. There's people that, that's all they do. They're body doubles for certain parts because that part looks really good, the rest of them might not, kind of a thing. Like that whole joke, like throw a, f that old joke of like throw a flag over their face and in the country. Some people look great, but you just take their face off and the rest of them looks great. But you know, whatever. Um, that's why, like, in the movie, it's all heavily edited. That's not what real people look like. And it sucks. And I say this in a way because, and I did see this in, like, a meme. I think they're called memes. I don't understand memes. But, but I think you, you call it memes. Um, I'll put it in right here. Without even looking at that, because I'm gonna have to go back on my computer. It's back there. So, by the way, welcome to like my new setup. I'm I'm super happy with all this stuff. Secondhand, not new. I don't care. 
Those lights from the Dollarama. I don't care. I like them. I am a weird person. Which is going to tie into something that I'll talk about later. Okay. I'll get that later. Back to the meme picture thing. Whatever. I don't necessarily know the quote by heart. But the message is the same. Disney and porn ruined it for everybody. So... Everyone that grew up watching the Disney princesses, again, whether you are a girl or you are a boy or you identify as one of the two or you don't identify as any of them at all, it don't matter at all. What matters and the part of the Disney part is if you are waiting for your Prince Charming to come and rescue you. Because that's what all of those Disney princess movies are. Even though Disney owns like everything now, but that's not the point. Not the point. Um, if you're waiting for your Prince Charming, you're going to be waiting a long time. Because Prince Charmings don't exist. They are fictional characters. Just like the whole Fifty Shades of Grey. Alright? If you guys want a whole part of like why Fifty Shades of Grey is so unrealistic, not only just badly written, but unrealistic, not up to how... I mean, it would never happen in real life, and even the parts that they try to describe about, like, the bedroom scenes are totally incorrect. If you guys want a whole thing on that, let me know. Because for a while, I worked in an adult store. I sold pain and propane accessories. Again, my age is showing, and that's cool with me, all right? Um, you know, someone on Instagram was like, oh, I want to see your birth certificate. I don't think you're 36. All right, fine. From now on, I'm 26. Okay, let's just go. I don't care. I don't care. But if you're waiting for your Prince Charming, they're not real. Things in movies are made up. They're fantasies, which ties into the other side of it. If you are a human being and you are interested in mostly women, because this is, you know, Prince Charming is that side, you know, porn stuff is usually women, but it can go for either way. Um, if you're looking for, what do they call it in, in that picture, the insatiable whore? Um, no. I mean, that, that sounds all great in, in your mind, but trust me when I say this, once you get a partner that is insatiable, you can't keep up. Like, it, it takes, and then this is going to go into the next part where, you know, you need to, to mesh. You need to have the thing. So, again, the whole Prince Charming thing isn't real. Stop looking for it. And the whole, like, perfect size, the body shape thing that will do pretty much anything for you in, in, in bed. Um, again, this is where I said, like, real men. But it's not real men. Real people, real human beings who are sexually attracted to women. They don't really want that person in, in those adult sites, even though you might think you need to live up to that. No, that is their fantasy. Now, fantasies in what you want in real life sometimes are the same thing. I mean, you know, they're fantasies. Most people don't want to marry their fantasy because once you have your fantasy, what else are you trying to strive to get through? That is a very legit point. We can go back to things in my life, okay? You all know, if you don't know by now, I am on the Quora platform. I enjoy it. I'm a top writer. Very apparently respected. Whatever. I just have a lot of fun. But I am in the program where I could make a lot of money by, you know, asking questions and all that whatnot. But that's my hobby. That's what I have fun with. And if I were to take it really, really seriously and turn it into like a job and make money, then I wouldn't be able to be so witty with my answers because sometimes if you ask a stupid question, you're going to get a stupid answer, whatever. Um, but if I turn my hobby into my job, what am I going to do for kicks and giggles? Same thing. Like, you don't want to marry your fantasy. Of course, your fantasy is your fantasy. So that's what you do when, you know, you're all by yourself in the shower in the morning or whatever. You think about that in your mind. Okay. But that's called a fantasy. That's a visual thing. It's not what people want in real life. 
Think about it. Again, next time that you go out in public, look around. There is just as many different body types that are there with a partner. Doesn't matter what your body type is. Being in a relationship with someone who is only looking at the materialistic things of life sucks. You don't want that. I mean, trying to live up to those standards for that person is just going, it, it's kind of a form of like emotional abuse. And, and it's hard right now for people to do the distinction because social media kind of ruins it for everyone. But I mean, and I also understand that some people are like, I just want to be loved. And, and that is, is sad, seriously. And I understand how you can get there though. I mean, my life hasn't been easy, but I, I learned. It's still heartbreaking to be alone and feel like nobody wants you, but it's way worse if you're in a relationship and you don't feel like that person wants you. You feel invisible, it's worse. Took me three years to recover from that. Let's get to, you know, the subject that you clicked here to talk about. So now that I've tried to give you a little bit of maybe thoughts to think about so that you don't feel like you're a freak or the only one that, you know, you are worthy of love. And this is where the whole fuck labels in my life thing. I, I don't need labels, okay? And I don't understand why we need to label your sexualities or whatever. We should just be like, you know what? I love you. You know, for you don't need to explain stuff. You, we shouldn't have to. That we're in a place in life where we have to, whatever. But again, I identify as pansexual. No, I don't like frying pans. It's a joke on the internet, okay? It just means that I'm attracted to another human being for who they are as a person. What do they bring to my life? Do we have things in common? Can we laugh the same jokes? Because again, I am cheesy as fuck. I like those really horrible, made cheesy horror movies. I laugh at them because I know they're not true, okay? The only reason I laugh at horror movies and I like horror movies is because none of it's real. If I were to watch tragedies like that in real life, I would break down. I know it's not real, so I can laugh at it. But you know, I'm looking for someone that, you know, meshes well, that I can have fun with, that can be myself, that I can have comfortable silences with. That takes a while to get to know the people. I happen to be that type of person. I don't jump in bed on the first date, but that's me. You do, you do you, you do what you want to do. But I hate that I have to put a label on it because that's how society actually works, except that some people are, you know, attracted to only, you know, the opposite gender that, that they are, or, or they're only attracted to the same gender, or whatever the heck it is that you're attracted to. Real human beings aren't really, they don't really care what the outside packaging is. Whether you're, you know, whatever body type, size, shape, it doesn't really matter. Because, again, real individuals, people that know what's up in life, they want that connection. They want to find someone that they enjoy spending time with, that they enjoy doing their activities with, that, they, that they're that looking for someone that's gonna get their jokes, that you can have your little inside jokes and that only the two of you have. And guess what that's called? It's called intimacy. Because intimacy and sex are actually two separate things. Usually you want them tied together, you know, in a very good, proper relationship they are tied together. And the Fifty Shades of Grey, they blur those lines. And again, that shit is wrong. If you have questions, if you want to hear more about it, let me know. I'm very happy to explain. But I can hear some of you now going, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, your partner, once they love you for who you are, they're going to think you are gorgeous. They're going to think you're sexy because confidence is apparently super sexy. Um, no, just having a good time, being happy, being in a good place is actually super attractive and super sexy. And if you love somebody for who they are as a person, for their personality, this is something I said since I was about 14 before I even knew all this shit, personality will shine through. Once you love someone for their personality, you do love them for their physical. And Again, that's something that takes time to figure out, but I'm trying to let you know that it's there and think about it and, and hopefully learn 
you know, to realize that your your body shape type has got nothing to do with it, really. And again, I have friends on my Facebook, and it breaks my heart when I hear them go like, oh, nobody's into bigger people, blah, blah, blah. And this one certain person, my heart breaks for them. They've been on this roller coaster of, of nobody wants me because I'm a bigger person for like almost two years now. And they're like self-sabotaging themselves because this person has the best personality. This person's hilarious. The jokes are on point. They're very kind, outgoing. They have much talent in many things. But then when you talk to them, the they're just the negativity because they're so... Mm. And I know because I've been there. I've been in the shoes where I was looking at myself in the mirror and going, how the heck can somebody find this attractive? And I, I was on the internet. And then people stopped asking me questions. I'm thinking, how the heck? So, there are some people who are attracted to, you know, those, those little skinny ones. That's what they're physically attracted to. It doesn't mean that if they meet somebody with a different body type that has the awesome personality that they make the connection with, that they're not going to still love you and find you just as attractive. They might. They just don't know that maybe. Maybe they've never met somebody that way. Um, but then there's people out there that actually prefer bigger sized people. That's just what they like. And let me tell you one little secret. From someone who has dated both men and women, and when it comes to the bedroom stuff where intimacy is involved, being with a man or a woman isn't really that much different, okay? Because when intimacy is there, you're there for the right reasons, because you love the person, you care about them, there's a connection, it's really not that different. It's, it's, it's really not. I mean, I'm not going to get into details, but I mean, it's intimacy is intimacy, things kind of happen, and, and yeah, again. Porn kind of ruined that for everybody. It doesn't happen like it does in those videos, all right? Sorry to ruin it for all, you know, you people out there that, that love. Um, no, that's, it's all for show. That's not really how it happens. But, and don't ask me how it happens, because that, that's inappropriate. But for someone who has dated both men and women, and I have lots of friends who are on the LGBT, some people that aren't, but a lot of my friends are guys. And, and, and I talk with them like, like one of the guys. And let me tell you, thick girls do it better. The girls are just more fun. We're more fun for a lot of reasons. I mean, there are some reasons that I'm not going to go into because, again, this is still PG-13, but we're thick girls and things kind of tend to go on forever in a way like that. But that old saying that they used to say back in the day, like, more cushion for the pushing, it's true, right? If you're wanting to go in it and you're the type of person that, that likes it to whatever, um... Well, you're not afraid to break the other person because I, I can say that as in like I've, I've met people. I'm like, well, I don't really like, are you going to break it? You know, um, sometimes that is something that comes into your mind. Like you want to do something that you see and whatever. And you're thinking, well, are you going to like, you're, you're tiny. You can't support this kind of weight or kind of a thing like that. Um, bigger people, like, you know, you, you can kind of give a little bit more of a push and a shove and it's, it's more fun. And then there's this really cute little part that I'm going to give out. It was kind of a secret. But let's put it up there just to help all those thick girls out there get some chances. And those thick boys and those thick people in general. People that are not overweight, but they're not the size that, you know, models are on social media. They try to, you know, because again, society gives us all these pressures. They usually tend to go to the gym and work out. And um, they have a little bit more endurance when it comes to adult activities, and uh, sometimes they're a lot more bendier. And um, being very bendy can be a very good thing. Just say it, all right? All right, before I get too much into this and like get copyright, I mean, I'm not monetizing, I'm not looking for that either. Because then I might have to put like this disclosure in the beginning, you have to be 18 and then that's all. Too much stuff I don't wanna get into. But the whole point and everything that I'm trying to say is that Body type size actually doesn't matter. People tend, I mean, real people, people who are looking for a relationship for all the right reasons, which is like 95% of people, okay? Most people really want that real connection. They want their best friend by their side and someone they can have a good time with and do their activities and have the same interests and the same kind of TV shows. You go to the same kind of movies. You can do things together. So they're looking for that 
Most people will overlook your body type when they start getting to know you. Seriously, I know for all of you out there that are hurting right now thinking that you're not worthy because you're, you're not looking like a Kardashian, please stop. People don't care about that. They want you for who you are. And when you're always negative and you're, you're always down, sometimes that's what is making the people not want to, to be around. Not what you look like. It's the fact that you're always like, you know, mm, mm. And I, I learned the hard way. But I will end this with a saying that I've been saying for a very long time about the Kardashians. And everything I learned about the Kardashians, I learned against my will. True. I mean, they pretty much like own Instagram. But even the Kardashians don't look like the Kardashians. They really, really freaking don't. The Kardashians are all plastic. And you can actually look this up. I mean, they're like on season, what, 12? If you don't believe me, or you actually just are curious to see how much of a difference of how much they don't look like themselves, just go on Google. Go on Google on your computer and um, type in your, your favorite, you know, Jenner or Kardashian person. And, and type in years, like five or six years ago, you know, 2010. A bunch of pictures are going to pop up because, again, their TV show, it's been on there for like, what, 12 years or something like that. There's pictures. It gets, like, documented. You will see what they look like five or six years ago. And I'll let you know now. They don't look like they do now. They don't. They are plastic. They have a lot of money. They have a very good plastic surgeon. So, yeah, trying to look like someone who doesn't look like themselves because they have everything enhanced? Well, no. And again, that's just what someone has in their mind as a fantasy. People don't really want to have their fantasy every single freaking day because they can't keep up with it. And, and then if they have their fantasy every single day, what are they going to think about when they're by themselves? Because, you know, we're going to be honest, all right? It's just how life works. All right, I'm apologizing because I know I said I was going to end on that, but something else just came to mind when I talked about like body enhancements. Yes. So again, coming from someone who has been with women, who is attracted to women, um, who has been with guys, and, and who has a lot of, of friends of different genders, whether they have some or not, or identify with whatever the heck it is. Um, we talk about stuff, okay? And again, I, I worked in an adult store where people come in and talk about stuff. When it comes to the top part of the body, which, which mine, there's some there. Again, we'll address the fact of that later because I don't like them that much. I mean, I like the fact that they're there. I just don't like how much of them are there. No, we're going to address that. Again, a lot of my weight loss has happened and my body hasn't caught up. So there's probably going to be some kind of like surgery in the future to fix all that stuff up. Whatever. As for now, I'm still super happy. But... When it comes down to the top part of a female, whether you're cisgender when you're born that way or identified, whatever the case may be. All right, get to the point, get it. So when it comes to like the top part of the body, so if you are someone that has the top part of the, the female body and you feel very insecure about the top part of your female body, don't, don't. Because most people, they might not admit this, but when people get enhancement surgery, when they look really fake, like balloons just sitting there, that ain't pretty. I'll tell you that. I don't think that that is a turn on. And, and most people that I know that are attracted to women don't find that either. We all think it sucks. But there are some people that have enhancement surgery and it gets done very well and it aesthetically looks nice. But once you get there, they feel and that's something I'm going to leave you with again before I get like too much into like the gotta go higher than PG-13 rating on this thing. Um, when it comes to, you know, being with a person in the bedroom part, people who are attracted to female top body parts, um, real ones are way better. They feel better, they're better, we like them better, and size doesn't really matter. Really, it, it, it doesn't at the end of the point. I mean, boobs are boobs, and people just like them. But real ones are way more fun to have fun with than the fake ones. So just keep that in mind. Even though, again, it, you may think that the people that you are attracted to 
are not attracted to you because of your body type. Keep in mind that social media is giving you the wrong idea of what you should look like, but it's also giving everybody else the wrong idea of what they should look like. They know what they want, but they want to fit in with the norm, the fake norm of social media. They might not actually go out there and say that they like the curves of a bigger person. But in their minds, they might. They're probably just saying what everybody else is saying to keep the status quo, not to be the weirdo in the group. But let me tell you that probably most of the time they don't care or they like it a little bit bigger. So I just hope that this helps a lot of you out there that are thinking that you need to change. No, if you are a healthy, it don't matter what shape, body size you have. If you're healthy, good for you. Awesome. Please, I am trying, and if you, you want more on this, like inbox me, if you're trying to feel okay in your own skin because of you know, body types and sizes and whatnot, and you're struggling with it, like inbox me. I will help you with that. I'll try my best. I have other resources for first off, but in the end, the outside, it's just a vessel, all right? It's just a thing that holds all your insides and your guts together so that your, you know, entrails, like they call them the old time ago, you know, just so your organs don't fall out, right? That's just what it's for. Who you are as a person, your personality is really what people want. And, and yes, TV, movies, social media has given you a false idea of what people want. People don't really want those things. They do in their mind for the five minutes by themselves and whatnot you know it's a thing like that but in real life they want the connection they want the real person they want who you are as a person and most people don't care and if they are the type that they're like hmm I like you but you're not physically what I'm looking for cuz I've been told that a few times those people do not deserve your time again I know it hurts when they say that and you think that you know you want to be with that person, but trust me, again, I've been there and it sucked. Being with someone who keeps making you feel like you are not good enough is five times more depressing, more hurtful than being alone. Because right now I am alone. I mean, I have friends and I have all that kind of stuff, but like relationship wise, I'm alone. Sometimes it kind of gets to me, but then I think back of when I was with someone, but that someone did not make me feel pretty or worth their time. If I can let you go with one thing, it's that, is don't compromise your self-respect to be with someone, because that's not love, all right? You want to find love, and you can find love because you are definitely worthy of being loved. You just need to find your weirdo, your, your right other person. Again, that whole thing of like, you know, knight in shining armor. No, there's no such thing. Wait for your idiot and tinfoil hat. And I don't say that in a bad way at all. An idiot and tinfoil hat is gonna laugh. They're gonna have a good time. They don't take things too seriously. They're not materialistic, which is what you want. Just, just try to look at things in a different way. Try to look at yourself in a different way. Again, if you're struggling with that, inbox me. I'm definitely there to help people. Definitely there. I mean, yeah, I put out this thing the other day and it's true. Yes, if people can hate somebody else that they've never met in their whole entire life just because they can, then I can do the opposite. I can love every single one of you and never have met you before because I do love every single one of you, because you make me happy. Being able to talk about this stuff and sharing all the stuff that's stuck in my head with all of you, and then when I get the positive messages from you about how much it's helped you or how much you love, but that just makes all the days where I feel lonely. Because whether you're here with me physically or not, you're here with me in spirit, and I know I'm not alone, and I want all of you to know that you are not alone. You're not the only one that feels that way. We all do. We all have bad days. A lot of people don't like the reflection they see in the mirror. And you're not the only person that does. 
I'm trying to let you know that the reflection that you see is not important. What people really look for, what, you know, a mature person who wants a real relationship is looking for, is they're looking for the real person. They're looking for who you are, for what you can bring to their life, for your what you want. And, and if your things that happen in, in the bedroom are not very blah blah blah, who cares? If, just find somebody that, that likes the uh, stuff. Because if that's what you like, then that's what you like, okay? Don't try to go do some weird crazy shit because you watch Fifty Shades of Grey and you think that's how life should work. No. You also have to find somebody that likes the same things you do. And it's okay to not like any crazy weird shit. It's perfectly fine. It's called consent. If you both happen to like weird crazy whatever stuff, then good for you. I mean, as long as you're both saying yes to it and no one's getting hurt, go for it. But if you don't like any of those crazy weird things, then that's perfectly fine too. There's nothing wrong with just being vanilla, like they call it, or more than vanilla, whatever. That's fine. If that's what you like doing, then, then do that. Trust me, there's a lot of other people that are just, that's all they want to do. So, I mean, find that person, find that person. Not the outer shell of what someone looks like. Find who they are and connect with that. And you will see that happiness will come through and you will just fall in love. Falling in love for all the right reasons is one of the best things. And they try to put that in movies, but they always fail because they can't put all the right reasons in a movie. They tend to put on the physical shit. And physical things are not all people are looking for. They're looking for the connection, for the intimacy, for who you are as a person. So with all that, again, I'm gonna let you guys have a great rest of the week. If you have any questions, ask away. If you want to subscribe, sure. If you don't, I still love you anyway. Come back another time. But with all that, I'm going to go hang out with my friend. And uh, all of you, have a good day.